Hello everybody, Chris here and in this video I want to show you guys a couple ways that you can create automatic tri-mesh colliders for your game objects inside of Godot. So the idea here is that you have an object that doesn't have a completely basic shape. So I have this base level object which is part of this .dae model I was importing over from Blender. And you can see that this base level piece actually has a slope in part of it. So it's not a simple plane or a box where you could just simply slap on a box collider and call it done because it has this angle here. And then part of this base is elevated above the other part. So as a result, you need a more complicated collider such as an automatically generated tri-mesh collider. Now when you create these colliders, it's going to do it for each individual mesh. You can see that in this uh, level model that there are a lot of objects. So I would need to do it for each individual one if I'm doing it using this method. With this wall piece selected, you can see that there's no collider on it yet, like there is for this slanted wall left. So I'm going to select the wall. And whenever you have a mesh instance selected, a new menu called Mesh will open up in the preview window. So you can click on that and then you can go down to Create Tri-Mesh Static Body, which will create a static body object, meaning it doesn't move with the physics engine. And the collision shape will be automatically generated based on the original model. So you can see, if we zoom in closely, that it's doing this using triangles which is an ideal shape for games, and that the mesh perfectly corresponds with the model that was imported. So I can simply go and do this for a bunch more of these little individual mesh instances. So if you're using someone else's models, this may be ideal for you so that you don't need to open up a program such as Blender or 3ds Max in order to create the colliders. But if you are editing your own model in a program such as Blender, then you can actually have these colliders automatically be created when you import it into Godot and have it be immediately recognized which shape the colliders are supposed to correspond with. So the wall corner collider would go with the wall corner object, of course. So with the same model object over in Blender, you can see under base level that I have an object created called base level dash colon Lee. So that's C-O-L-O-N-L-Y. Uh, what this means is collider only, meaning that when it imports into Godot, that this is going to be recognized as a collider object and it's going to automatically attach itself to the base level object. So even though this collider only object is an actual object inside of Blender, it will immediately get converted into its tri-mesh shape inside of Godot. So that means that what you need to do for each object inside of Blender that you want to add the collider to is you need to duplicate it. So I'm going to select this slanted wall left. I'm going to hit shift D, which will create slanted left uh, dot zero zero one. I'm going to rename it to slanted left dash C O L only hit enter. And I'm going to make it a child of the slanted wall left object. So I have to first select my collider only and then the original version. And then in the viewer window, I'm going to hit control P and set parent to object. So now if we open that up, you can see that I have attached the collider only object to the parent. Uh, apparently I already had one for that, so I'm going to delete the extra one. Uh, but it would be the same process. For each object you want to import with a collider, shift D, uh, right click so that you cancel its transform adjust. Um, rename it to have collider only at the end, and then hold shift to select the original and make that the ob active object. And then control P set parent to the active object, which will bring this collider only object as a child of the parent object. So the shape of the collider is going to be a tri-mesh version of the shape that we copied. And I think when you're done with these collider objects, you can hide them from view so that they're not overlapping your real model. For now, let's create a couple extra collider only objects. So shift P to parent it, control D to duplicate the second door dash c o l only shift click to select the parent object and then control p set parent to so i'm actually not sure on this and it's worth testing but if the uh, child object doesn't have exactly the same name as the parent object will it still become the collider of the parent object as long as it has the c o l only tag associated with it so anyway we'll, we'll test that out so we have these five objects that have their collider only copies added on so I'm going to save the model. So now to take this model and re-export it to Blender with these five collider only uh, object copies created. 
I'm going to go up to File, Export, Collada. I'm going to find my Godot folder where I have the model stored. I'm going to export it there. And I'm going to open it up as a new copy inside of Godot. So I'm double clicking from the original model to do a new inherited copy. So it will be exactly as it is in Blender. So now we can see that a few other uh, collider meshes have been added. So we have this slanted wall right over here on the right, which didn't have one before. And these doors have their own collider meshes as well. So we can see clicking on them, we can go down to door and shape to see that the collider only object copy has been brought in as a concave polygon shape. And note that the way the import worked, it didn't actually have to have exactly the same name uh, as the parent object in Blender. It simply needed to have the dash collider only as a tag at the end of the name. Uh, so that's an interesting little detail. So if you'd like, when you bring your collider meshes over from Blender, uh, we can take the door here and you see that the collider mesh is kind of complicated. Uh, you could probably get away with this uh, for a door because it's not all that complicated. But if we want to reduce the number of triangles here in this collider mesh, then we can go back over to the door inside of Blender. So you can see that I'm uh, selecting the collider only door here. You could use a modifier like remesh in order to simplify the collider model. So we can see here that when we go to wireframe mode that this makes this model much simpler than the door. So if you didn't need super realistic collision physics with the door, then you could get away with a collider mesh like that. Uh, which would be simpler than what you see over here with the door itself. So when you do remesh the object, though, you should make sure that it ends up in the same position because it's going to be the collider for that object. So I'm going to recreate the collider only, reparent it uh, just so that I have it in the same spot. And now I'm going to add the remesh. I'm going to leave it as the default octree depth of four. Don't really need to go much lower than that. So I'll just hit apply there to remesh that. And then I will hide that. With the other door collider, I'll do the same thing. So add, remesh, apply, and then there's our collider mesh. So if we take the level now and uh, re-exploit it as a .dae object into Blender, we should be able to see the simplified collider object in Blender. So we import it into Blender, and that's what we get for the new collider mesh for the door. So hopefully with this video, you guys understand now two ways that you can create automatic collider meshes for your models uh, that you want to import into your games in Godot. And also how that if you need a simplified collider mesh, how you can simply use a remesh modifier on the collider only object in Blender in order to reduce its complexity before you bring that model into Godot. So that's pretty much going to be it for this video. I've been Chris. Thanks for watching. And I will see you guys in my future video content.